hey good day everyone and welcome to my channel a channel where we make engineering design structural design easy i'm your host konye di olodun and i want to thank everyone that has subscribed to this channel and those who are yet to subscribe we encourage you to click the subscribe buttons so that whenever we post um, these important videos educative videos you can always get notified and you'll be the first to know so once again if you've not subscribed please click the subscribe button and today we'll be talking about retaining walls retaining walls in structural engineering retaining walls are very very important very important and i'll tell you why and i will show you how you can design it and there are some tricks some important um, things that you need to know about retaining wall which if you stay to the end you will get it thank you so as we dive right in uh, retaining wall we'll talk about the different type of retaining walls that we have and why one is used from the other the reason is the condition the state by which you can use one and not use the other okay let's dive right in the first we'll talk about is the gravity retaining wall this is the gravity retaining wall the major thing it's used to retain it is own weight it is very bulky full mass of concrete full mass of concrete but it's not too good for high to retain it that is higher than three meters anything above three meters it is not very economical to use the gravity retaining wall we have the semi-gravity retaining wall which is also close to the gravity retaining wall only that we have um, reinforcement and the mass of concrete is not as much as the gravity retaining wall the next is the cantilever wall the cantilever wall retain the cantilever retaining wall this is the retaining wall the majority of time we will be using because it is very very economical for retaining it and materials that are above three meters that's above three meters the gravity retaining wall because of its economical nature it's what we use to design that's the major when you say retaining wall this is the major retaining wall that we we use the next is the counterfort wall the counterfort wall is still the cantilever retaining wall but but pay attention to this the difference between the counterfort wall and the uh, cantilever retaining wall is there is a counterfort at the heel where the back feel this is when your your retaining wall is above six is going close to six meter and above six meter you need to put in this your counter fort wall at intervals depending on your calculation maybe three three meters thereabouts this is it why the buttress wall for the counter fort it's placed in the back field the area of the back field 
so you backfill the counter foot so you won't really see see it after you've you've backfilled but the buttress wall it's at the front so even after you feel you still see this um, other um, buttress wall holding the retaining wall so that is the different type of retaining walls that we have and we'll be working with that so let's just see some others that we didn't discuss here if you uh, this is still the same the gravity the counter fourth wall and uh, yeah this is where i'm coming to we have the gravity retaining wall we have the pie sheet pie wall or piling wall this is this is when you want to retain very high materials above six meters going to six to eight meters and above this pipe wall is what we we use even the anchor these are just the two the the other retaining walls that we didn't talk about in the previous um the previous um slide this is the anchor wall the the because of the weight of the earth materials that is being retained it's we easily overturn your retaining wall so you place an anchor into the earth that we still help in adding resistance to add resistance to the wall very very important so how does your retaining wall phase if you understand how the retaining wall phase you can easily design for your retaining wall if you look at this image it phase via overturning this is the major way the retaining wall phase based on the lateral push from the earth pressure it can create an overturning moment and once it overturns all the earth that you've retained will all spill and the other method of of failure will be sliding if it slides the earth pushes it and it slides even if it did not overturn it slides that's another method by which your retaining wall phase the other part that it faces is true and um, failure from the earth's bearing pressure if the weight of your your retaining wall over it exceeds the capacity of the ground pressure it begins to settle and the the retaining wall will fail the other one is rotation if it turns within that axis not overturning this time but if it rotates within that axis it means it has failed okay this is another very important part i would like us to pay close attention to very very important if you look at this moment how the 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 behavior of the retaining wall when it's under pressure when when it's being loaded if the earth pushes against this your retaining wall it bends towards this direction so your main reinforcement bars would be at this area this is where the tension is acting on the retaining wall the retaining wall this time the retaining wall then if you look at your base at the at the tool it's this is where the the behavior is the the pressure as this is pushing towards this the pressure tends to push the toes upward and the heel downward so if you understand this 
behavior pattern you know how to reinforce your retaining wall if you can re reinforce it properly then you are good to go so back to straight to how it is being being reinforced if you look at what we've explained your main bars at uh, this part why at the at your toes the main reinforcement is at the bottom while at the heel the main reinforcement is at the top is at the top so with this with this understanding you can dive right in to do your design to do your design so if we look at this this is a typical um retaining wall and the load on it and the load on it so if the only thing most most of the designs we give to you will be the height at which you have to retain typically this is where i want you to pay close attention to if you miss if you miss this then you you missed out on this lecture let's assume if they say three meter height wall that's the that's the retaining wall height you want to use to 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 retain the 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 place you need to retain is th let's say three meter three meter or four meter depending on what you want to return like here it's 20 foot is a six meter so let's assume you want to return a six meter uh, it there are some components you need to know like the stem of we already know the height of the wall what will be the thickness of this wall what will be the thickness of the base and what will be the length the length of this two and the length of the base those are very critical critical parameters you need to know when doing your design when doing your design i will explain a very empirical method of estimating those information of estimating those information if you can estimate that then with those initial parameters we'll do a design then if it does not pass then we can um, change it based on our design so the first thing you need to know is for the 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 width of this term the width of this web the web of the retaining wall the way i i i achieve my my thickness is 0 0.1 multiply by the height or you can say height divided by 10 the height divided by 10 so if we say this is six meter six meter divided by 10 it will give us 600 mm so that will be the the initial thickness of the web that, that we we'll use initial thickness of the web and also for this um, thickness of the base we still use um, 0 0.1 times the height of the wall which is if this is six meter we we'll assume the thickness of your base to be six meter divided by 10 which is also 600 mm so the thickness of this base would be 600 mm why the width here would be 600 mm so for the base an estimate of this base would be the height of the wall divided by two that is 
0 0.5 times the height so if this height is 6 meter the base here would be 6 divided by 2 so our estimate would be this length would be 3 meters is an estimate is just an estimate from there we cannot do our design but this here the tool here we will say the estimate we will give will be one as in one third of the base so if this is three meters the tool will now become one meter one meter so with this empirical empirical formula get those just hold this information i said to you and we'll dive straight in into our prota detail to do our design we'll dive into our prota detail prota detail to do our design so let's dive right in okay now we click on our prota detail it will pop up so when it comes up it will show you to start we click let's say we say retaining wall retaining walls okay we say okay we push uk we say yes uh, we say okay update okay so we with that it will give you this page what you do is to click on start by creating a new drawing we are here we are here a new drawing so if you look at this menu bars these icons you see different different things but the one we are interested in is this cantilever retaining wall just click on it when you click on it it will bring up this this part this is what it will bring so like what we've discussed about we know our height we know if this is six meter we've already estimated a a will now be 0 0.1 times h the t one because this is if they are different but we just use one thickness for the um, the base this will be 0 0.1 times height t1 is also 0 0.1 times height this is 0 0.5 times height which is half of it and this is one third of this one third of this now we say this our height this this is our height we say six meter the wall length you determine the wall length you say the wall the the wall height was changed do you want to use proportionate values for preliminary designs and the system we calculate preliminary what i just explained to you is the same process the system would use we can say yes use it so if we do that it will automatically do our calculations for us our calculations for us okay so if you look carefully uh, you look carefully you see t1 t1 as 600 which we now say 0 0.1 times the height is still the preliminary the e does t1 will be that then um for b1 is using 600 b2 which we say the thickness is using 500 but we we estimated 600 mm so it all depends okay then b2 it now use 0 0.5 times the height which is 3 so the the total the total um the total 
length of the base will now be the summation of all of all this of all this so this is it so we've gotten to this part from what it has calculated the overturning uh, turning factor of safety which is the overturning moment it checked it so that the resistant moment must <clears throat> be greater or or equal to the overturning moment so which is this and we've gotten all what we've, we've done it shows that yes they all pass this is sliding this is the resistance and this is the total failure but if there's any other thing we can come the soil here is where you can put your soil to check for the bearing pressure we discussed about failure if you've done your soil test and let's assume it is let's say 150 if you look now based on the the bearing pressure it's it's failing it's failing so it all depends on your soil test so with this now all these are all um the different analysis total failure how the failure every other thing would look then this is the design this is the design where this is where you alter your reinforcement and every other thing that you want to alter to get this this right we go back to to um genera and try to tweak let's assume we tweak this to 2.5 uh, it didn't give us what we wanted so let's see um, the pressure we can increase so as you can see this is showing that's based on the head bearing pressure you your your the pressure from the retaining wall is higher so what you do is to tweak either your b1 your b2 or your b3 based on this because of the air pressure is being determined by the the area that is in contact with the the ground so if you make this bigger it will uh, definitely affect how this pressure will go so let's say we tweak b1 let's increase b1 to 1000 to see what we happen and voila because we've increased this it has reduced the head pressure so if everything here shows okay very everything here shows okay then you mean your design is good so with this you can change the different base plates pattern different things or we are doing just a simple cantilever retaining wall so this is a design if you look at your design this is where all these are coming from so with this you've done your complete design and from here we can generate our reports we can prepare our drawing so if you want your drawing you click on prepare drawing and automatically it will produce your drawing which you can export to AutoCAD I will not teach you how to export to AutoCAD check my previous um, my previous um, videos I've already explained everything about exporting to AutoCAD so with this you've done your design perfectly and you've detailed everything with just a click of a button with just a click of a button so we will stop here for today and i want to appreciate everyone that um, that stayed tuned to the end and uh, 
I believe that you must have gained one or two very important things from this design how to design retaining wall so if you've not still subscribed to my channel please click the subscribe button and if there's any question you have or whatever to you the the thing you want us to teach about to talk about please put it down on the comment section see we meet again remain blessed thank you